My name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. We are out here with the Kermes 1, which is about a day away from its trans dress injection burn. And you'll be seeing that coming up shortly. But before we get to it, I got to do, well, some, some adjustments. Um, you might recall that I put the Kermes into a sort of pre-orbit. That way I was able to split the burn to get out to Drez into two separate burns, and we're going to be performing the second half of this burn once we've returned back to periapsis. But I got a bit of a problem. When I set up this initial transjez injection burn with the maneuver node and stuff, well, I ended up getting a very short path to Drez, and I was very proud of it, and it was actually not even that expensive of a burn, but once I took a look at uh, my intercept with Drez, I began to realize that my capture at the Drez end was going to be quite expensive indeed, and the original sin for all of this all goes back to episode 86. Back when I launched the first module for this particular vessel and put it into its parking orbit. And although I've learned a lot about how to build these parking orbits since then, uh, at the time I was, well, a little less than accurate in the placement of this orbit. And then I compounded that sin when I uh, set up this pre-burn. And again, I got really proud of my cheap and quick uh, injection out to Drez without paying any attention to what the cost is going to be once I have my Drez encounter. So here what I'm doing is I'm just sort of tweaking this and what I want to do is I just want to move the encounter back in time, not get there quite so fast. Unfortunately, I've already set up as well the burns to get the support vehicles out that way, so I can't push it back that far. And in fact, because the pre-orbit and where the periapsis is, I actually don't have that much flexibility anyway. But what I ended up doing is I ended up pushing it back about another 25 days. That should save me a little bit of fuel anyway. And it will also get it and the support vehicles all there at the same time. Well, within a day or two of each other anyway. And I'm pretty sure that the Kermes here does have the, it does have the fuel for the capture. And I'm pretty sure it has the fuel for... The return back. I overbuilt it a little bit. And uh, besides, I think I mentioned an episode or two ago, is that I do have two support vehicles also going along for the ride. I could always rob fuel from them and abort those particular parts of the mission. So I, I think I have enough flexibility that I should be able to deal with any sort of fuel shortcoming. So we'll just check, see where the node is compared to the periapsis. That's going to work fine. Here you can see you can see the Kermes 1 up there toward in the top orbit. We have the Kegel 5, that's the Drez lander in that orbit below it. And then we have coming around the Drez 1, which is a collection of uncrewed probes. All coming in, and you'll be seeing all of their injections out to Drez today. So I just deleted the alarm for the original node, and now I'm adding... An alarm for the second node, but if you take a look at the alarm clock there, you will see that I do have the Karayan 3 coming up to its periapsis in about an hour and 40 minutes. That's for an arrow braking maneuver, so we best get to that. Actually, on second thought, why don't we skip that first one, and here we are with the one that was after that. <laughs> How many arrow braking maneuvers can you guys see? So I thought I'd watch this one from the interior view. I'm a little bit surprised I'm not seeing more, uh, heating effects out those windows because we are just about a periapsis in the deepest part of our braking maneuver. We'll take a look here. You can see on the screen we have, there's our orbit there in blue. The yellow orbit is Kerbin Station, which we inevitably, eventually have to rendezvous with. Still going to take a little bit though because we've got a lot of things going on in this episode. And then once we were in the later part, higher part of the atmosphere, I started uh, tilting up, yawing up, I guess is what I'm doing here, sliding a bit sideways, trying to create some downdraft, or downdraft, <laughs> some, some aerodynamic pressure pushing on the vehicle, trying to lower my periapsis, trying to get every little bit that I can. The KSP does model 
body left on these objects, so you can do these kinds of things. But as this braking maneuver was coming to a close, and I was starting to look at when I would be coming around and hitting the atmosphere again, I began to realize that it was going to be perilously close to the trans dres injection burn that the Kermes has to do. So uh, at Apoapsis, I just pushed prograde and raised my periapsis out of the atmosphere just for now. We'll get back to these guys when we don't have quite so much going on. In the meantime, I don't know about you, but these two to me look like they are ready to start that final burn, which will set them on their way to Drez. So, first thing we need to do is get ourselves out of uh, locked view here. There we go. Okay, and there we can see Kerbin. So now it's just time to uh, time warp to our burn. There we go. <laughs> I love persistent rotation. Is it just me, or does it look like the top half is spinning in a different direction than the bottom half? I don't know if you're getting those weird effects. Maybe it is just me. Oh, we're slowing down. Oh, okay, that's just the alarm for this maneuver node. So I don't need that anymore, obviously. So let's see here. We have a 15 minute and 14 second burn. So we're going to split that in half, and that means I should be starting the burn 7 minutes and 37 seconds ahead of the node. So we'll just sort of finish up our time warping here. Getting pretty close. Let's slow ourselves down. In fact, I should slow myself down. Shoot, let's turn off the rotation. i got to turn off the rotation before we can do the burn. Oh, uh, yeah, let's get on to that node. Shoot, I should have stopped a little bit earlier than this. This thing doesn't exactly spin on a dime. But it's getting there. Oh, come on, we're closing in. Get on to that maneuver node. Oh, I got this. This is all right. Here we go. And close enough. Let's punch it. All right. So we are off for 15 minutes of burning, of course, with a little bit of physics warp along the way as well. Probably noticing, too, that uh, I have total of eight drop tanks around the side of this but right now I don't want to drop any tanks while I'm still in orbit around Kerbin so right now we're actually draining from four of those tanks equally I got the fuel lines hooked up so that four tanks are all being drained equally and then we'll end up dropping all four of those at the same time so you know, a little bit of thought into all the fuel lines and the staging for all that, but it was well worth it. Because I just can't stand debris <laughs> in orbit around Kerbin. Oh, I just noticed that our apoapsis has gone negative. So that means we have achieved escape velocity. We will be leaving the Kerbin's sphere of influence, but of course we got quite a bit more burning still to do. Pulling a mighty 1.2 meters per second squared of acceleration. Surface thrust to weight ratio of only 0.12. Actually, at the beginning of all this, when this thing was fully fueled during the first burn, the initial thrust to weight ratio was only 0.1. So this really does go sh to show you that once you're out in space, I mean, unless you're doing some power landings, which obviously this isn't going to be doing, but once you're out in space, for getting yourself where you need to go, thrust you can do with you can make do with with not a huge amount of thrust anyway according to Kerbal engineer we are getting close to this stage being empty the Delta V on this stage is getting pretty low so we should be seeing those four four of those radial tanks coming off and there they go right on cue beautiful all right and those of course 
will be exiting Kerbin's sphere of influence and orbiting the sun. And we're now running on two of those radial tanks. And of course, when the next two uh, go dry, they'll get dropped as well. Though that shouldn't be happening. We should be we shouldn't be dropping any more during this particular burn. Well, at least that's what I thought. Whoa. Well, I wasn't paying attention to Kerbal Engineer. I didn't think I had... I wasn't looking at how much Delta V was left in the stage, but I thought there was still plenty in the stage that it would go on like this. Oh, well, okay, well, I'm finishing off the burn. We'll deal with this later. Oh, shoot. The um, control point always seems to want to revert back to one of the docking ports. Must have been just the way I put this together. Okay, anyway. We're good now, so we're just going to burn finish this off. As you can see, we are closing in on the end of this, and then I'll try and see if I can figure out what just happened as far as as far as why those tanks just dropped. I must maybe I just wasn't paying enough attention. Maybe maybe the Delta V did get down to zero on the stage, I don't know. Well I should probably mention it was a smart part that actually form the staging. I didn't hit the space bar. <laughs> Maybe someone's wondering, like, well, it's staged because you hit the space bar, stupid. No, I, I have all that stuff automated through spark parts. We will be on our way to Dresden no time. And by no time, I mean we'll get there in a little less than a year. going to burn the node down just a little bit more and then we'll just sort of finish it off the last bit of it without the maneuver node there at all okay that, that's good enough I don't know it doesn't seem to be going down let's close this okay a little bit extra burning oh that does not s Oh, now I've lost those close encounter indicators. And in fact, what I had to do is set up a tiny little correction burn. It wasn't that much of a correction burn. And then with the correction burn out of the way and my intercept with Drez confirmed, it was time to go back and look at those tanks that got dropped. Alrighty, let's take a look here. They're full. Oh no, these tanks are full. Hang on, let's check the other one. Shoot. What about those tanks that are back on the Kermis? What about these ones? Come on. How about these tanks? Oh no, these are empty. I dropped the wrong ones. Oh gosh. Okay, and I can see a Kerbal Engineer, I only have 4,920 meters per second left. Oh, I'd be tight pressed just to get a capture around Drez, let alone a return journey. Oh my gosh, it's not like I can turn around and go back, is it? I am going to have to think about what I'm going to do about this. But in the meantime, these folks are speeding out of the Kerbin system. And I'm going to have to figure out a way to get them back home. And although now I might seem rather calm about this, I can assure you at the time that it happened, well, you know, an expletive or two might have escaped my mouth. But, you know, I ended that play session there, and then I sat there and I thought, okay, what am I going to do about this? And I decided, you know, this is going to be good. This is going to be fun. This is what KSP is all about, about dealing with mishaps and silly things that happen and still trying to get your Kerbals home. This is going to be like Apollo 13, except instead, well, Apollo 13 without the electrical problems and the life support. Well, not yet anyway. Mission's still young. <laughs> but unlike Apollo 13, instead of it playing out over a week, they're going to play out over and over Almost two years, a little less than two years is going to take before I know whether these folks are going to be home. But I did come up with a plan, and this is my plan. Uh, this is the Kegel 5 I'm with now. That mission, scrubbed. I mean, 
forget it. It's not going to happen. So what I'm doing is I am adjusting the trajectory for this trans Dres burn so that it will be scheduled to get to Dres a little bit before the Kermes is now set to get to Dres. The idea being that it's going to be performing this burn a day from now, and you're going to be seeing it a little later in this video. And if it leaves later and gets there earlier, somewhere along the line, the two have got to come pretty close, right? I would think they're going to the same place. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But the idea is to do an interplanetary rendezvous en route sometime in the future, whenever I can finagle it. And the Kermes is going to be stealing the fuel from the Kegel 5, because I'm not going to be performing a landing. Now, crude landing just isn't in the cards. And I'm going to do the same thing with the Drez 1, which is my collection of probes. Um, hopefully, and, and that, for that's more to keep my options open. I would actually still like the Drez 1 to perform its mission to get into orbit around Drez and to deploy its probes and do some uncrewed landings. But if I need that fuel as well, I would like it to be handy. And in that way, I'm keeping my options open. I think I can be a little bit flexible if the Kermes needs more fuel so that I can get a capture and then still be able to get back to um, Kerbin, then I'll do that. If I can't get enough fuel to get my capture, then I'm going to just try and do a flyby and get back to Kerbin. The operative word being getting back to Kerbin. That's obviously going to be mission one to get these folks back, but I think I can still get some stuff done uh, out of this mission anyway. Anyway, that's sort of the plan. We're going to have to wait a long time to see if that plan comes to fruition. In the meantime, why don't we get back to the Karayan 3, which is now back at Apoapsis. So we're taking the opportunity to bring down its periapsis back into Kerbin's atmosphere, using trajectories to help us predict what its post arrow breaking path is going to be. So I am pretty happy with that. Don't want to go too deep into the atmosphere. Again, we're taking this slowly. We'll extend these radiators again. You have, you should descend, like retract the radiators um, when you are using trajectories to predict your path through the atmosphere because the radiators represent a ton of drag, but of course you're going to have them retracted when you are going through the atmosphere because you know they'll break off <laughs> but if they're up we're using trajectories that will mess up trajectories prediction i'm just time warping here until we're down close to the atmosphere yeah that ought to do it and then of course we're going to retract the radiators once again and get ourselves pointed retrograde and get ready for another pass but once that pass was done, it was time to see a new vehicle, the beginning of my EVE Explorer, the Kermes 2. This here is the HAB module for that, and it's got a launch at 1.45, so the current time is, ooh, okay, that launch is barely just on over an hour from now, and the Karayan 3 is going to be in the midst of its arrow breaking maneuver. Uh, no, I'm going to have to pay attention to that because, uh, yeah, arrow breaking is obviously going to have to take precedence over a launch. I will be able to launch this again in three hours. That's when its next launch window is going to go, so that's no big deal. We can wait another three hours. Oh my goodness, you know, the next supply mission that's going to Kerbin Station is so bringing up air brakes for this thing. <laughs> I've got to bring my arrow braking time down. This is driving me crazy. Anyway, one thing I should be pointing out right here, if you take a look at the uh, time to periapsis, it's about an hour and a half. That's around the time where we will be coming around and doing this once again. Trying again to bleed off speed, but if you take a look at alarm clock, you will also see that the Trans Dres injection burn for the Kegel 5 is also in about an hour and a half. So, although arrow braking trumped a launch, the Kegel 5 it can't wait, so uh, <laughs> that's going to trump arrow braking. So, once I was back up at Apoapsis, I once again pushed the Karayan 3s periapsis out of the atmosphere 
Well, these people are going to have to wait a little bit longer to get to Kerbin Station because uh, this burn here is going to have to take priority. And we have about a seven and a half minute burn ahead of us at a mighty over a quarter of a G. Of course, much lighter vehicle. That's why it only has the single engine. The stock Nerva engine, by the way, instead of the three KSP interstellar extended engines that are on the Kermes. That's why we have the different plume animation. And you know, ever since I set up the pre-orbit for this, I don't know, an episode or two ago, I knew that this mission started to have a high probability of never happening. I even mentioned at the time that this thing might end up being simply a fuel depot for the Kermes in case they needed it. So the fact that I've now com decided to completely scrub this mission actually really doesn't upset me too much. And it makes sense that I should do the rendezvous before trying to do the capture on Drez because doing a capture on Drez with a vehicle that you never plan on using, that's just a waste of fuel. And maybe, who knows, I can maybe redirect this thing crashing into Drez and then, you know, all evidence has been erased. No drop tanks this time either. No staging at all, in fact, that's required. So I'm going to mess this up. I'm going to have to find some other way to do it. Thankfully, at least during this burn, that way never materialized. And as you can see here, as we come in towards the tail end of the burn, I got my intercept without any issues. So that means we're going to be leaving the Kegel 5 for now. Coming back to it sometime in the future. Going back to the Corian 3 very quickly because another window of opportunity has emerged. We're going to be pushing its periapsis back into the atmosphere, getting another arrow breaking maneuver in while we can, but then it's going to be a quick jump out to the Drez 1. And if this scene looks familiar to what you just saw with the Kegel 5 near the periapsis of its burn, well, that's not a coincidence because this is only about 25 game minutes later. Yeah, these two came boom, boom, right after each other, but uh, we were able to squeeze them in. And like I said, I'm keeping my options open with the Drez 1. It's uh, got a few probes, some science mapping equipment on it, a couple of uncrewed landers. One thing that is also an option that I might exercise is if I rendezvous it with the Kermes, out in interplanetary space. The Kermes is all equipped with all kinds of KAS parts and tools and things like that. They might start stripping this thing down, including the landers. Maybe it's the Kermes that might take these landers into Drez's orbit and drop them. That could be fun, but we'll have to see. Like I said, all depends on fuel situations. Once we're out there, we'll explore those options. We got plenty of time to think about it. No doubt about that. And with this final Drez intercept all set up, it's time for us to get back to the KSC where the HAB module for my EVE Explorer is still sitting on the pad. It's been here now for a day and it just missed another launch window. Why? Because I was busy arrow breaking the Karayan again. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to use alarm clock here, set up another alarm for its next launch window three hours from now and that won't be this episode but i hope you will see it next episode I mean, how much further can i keep pushing this back and with that bit of housekeeping done it was time to head out to the kermes one which is already approaching the edge of kerbin's sphere of influence yes we are trucking it so why don't we do ourselves a little bit of time warping and get ourselves into interplanetary space. So uh, hang on to your lunches, everybody. Here we go. Oh, the SOI change is still for a bit. Let's go faster than this. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, as fun as this is, why don't we cut out to being out here in interplanetary space where we actually do have some things to do because this is the first time I've had the uh, KSP interstellar magnetometer out here. So uh, yeah, there we go. There we have a good little batch of science. Uh, unfortunately, I can't transmit any of this, but what I can do 
is process it into the science lab that I have here. Yeah, the reason I can't transmit is because um, none of my interplanetary relays are well positioned to communicate with the Kermes here. Um, the, the cone of communication coming off of this antenna is very narrow and it's really for interplanetary communications and I'm still fairly close to Kerbin. So, uh, yeah, I got to get wait till I get a communication satellite in range there. But what I can do as well is, um, although the other science equipment has been out into interplanetary space before on other vessels, what I've never done is any science processing in interplanetary space because the science labs have always been busy processing and working through other science that has already been processed within Kerbin's sphere of influence when I've had vessels out here. So we got a lot of science here that we can process and I ended up filling up the science lab and well let's face it Chrissy and Tomwig are going to need something to do on this months and months that they're going to be spending on their way out to Dread. so hopefully this will be enough to keep them busy. And with that, we will join the Karayan 3 one last time in this episode. I've just finished another arrow breaking pass, and I'm setting up its alarm for the next time around. And what I want to draw attention to is how close that alarm is to this burn that's attached to the Karayan 1. That is a capture burn about Minmus. Yes, the Karine one has been busy all this time. You think I've been showing you lots of vessels or some I haven't even shown you in this episode? Yes, the Karine one has gone to Minmus. It is a route to do its capture around Minmus. And of course, I can't perform the capture and do the arrow breaking at the same time. So, sorry guys, we're going to push your periapsis out of the atmosphere one last time. Uh, yeah, hopefully next episode we'll get these folks home, but we are done with the Karayan 3, we are done with the Karayan 1. It's time for us to get back to the Kermes, and specifically, we should be getting a communication link soon. Now, I know this is crazy looking right now, but what I've got, I've, I've got toggled on all the communication cones, so all the communication cones from the different dish antennas can be seen, and all of the communication lines between those dish antennas can be seen. But what I want to draw attention to is towards the top of that higher orbit, that is interplanetary relay 3 coming very, very close to that very narrow communication cone for the Kermes. So that should get us a connection. And we are just. That looks like it. But wait a second. I don't see the connection link coming on. According to Remote Tech, I still don't have a connection, but it sure looks like we are right in the cone. What is going on here? Interplanetary relay? Yeah, I, I should have a connection. Let's, let's warp around or, you know, drag this around, take a look from this end. I know the cone is narrow, but oh, wait a sec. Wait a sec. We're under the cone. Damn you, third dimension. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so we don't have a communication link. This, the communication satellite is underneath the cone of communication. We'll have to wait until the Kermes is further out from Kerbin. As 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 uh, the Kermes keeps heading out towards Dres, this communication cone is going to get wider and wider and wider. Eventually... We'll get that communication. There's no rush, but that's going to have to be for a future episode. I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.